guys, welcome back to another Kings of War video. Now this one will be slightly different from the videos I've done in the past, as this one is going to be talking a bit more about uh, the game, some tactics, and the armies which I've been using recently. Um, so first up I'm going to go through my 1000 point undead army. Um, so this is what I've been using for the last couple of weeks. Um, and I've been using it in slightly different forms for the last uh, couple of months, um, but I've now refined it down to something which I'm really happy with. So first up is the sort of core of the infantry line. This is two regiments of skeletons. Both units have spears um, to give them phalanx to get those extra attacks. And both have banners and musicians. So... They weigh in at a grand total of 105 points each, which is fairly expensive for skeleton units. But I like these because um, having two instead of running a horde gives me a bit more flexibility. Um, it allows me to be a bit more mobile, and it's easier to sort of set up for flank charges and stuff like that. And the reason why I give them the spears um, is to increase their offensive output and also uh, increase their defensive ability against uh, flying creatures and cavalry that uh, minus one to attack um, when cavalry units charge them is a really big thing which helps them stick around. And then uh, the banner and musician are there to uh, just help with nerve tests. Um, I found a lot of the time that extra sort of one point uh, on the banner um, for their nerve test can really make the difference in the game. Um, especially if your opponent's forgotten to take musicians. So these two units are my sort of not quite cheap and cheerful infantry units, but they're the sort of core of my center block. So this next unit is my Revenant Regiment. So these guys uh, typically I deploy in the center of the battle line uh, with the two skeleton regiments flanking on either side. So my standard configuration for these guys is sword and shield. Uh, just to keep that high defense value of 5. And then they've also got a musician, a banner, and I've been giving them the Pipes of Terror recently as well. That's to offset the fact that these guys don't have a huge number of attacks. Uh, there's only 10 attacks coming from them, but they're more of a, a tank unit. Um, they can take a lot of damage um, because they've got a high nerve value and also a high defense value. But the uh, Pipes of Terror, by giving that extra sort of one um, point, um, of combat resolution really helps with uh, chasing the enemy away. So I keep these guys in the center with the skeleton regiments out on the flanks to protect their flanks and that's sort of it's the the powerful fist in, um, in my infantry army. And here's the first of my cavalry units. So this unit of Revenant cavalry has got a musician and a banner and I typically use these on the flanks but I'll also sometimes deploy them close by my infantry units and then flick around and roll up the side of my opponent's infantry when they come in to engage in the center. So this is the first unit, it's a slightly more expensive unit. And then the second unit I run is just the straight Revenant Cavalry. It's got no banner and no musicians and that's purely just a points factor. So I normally run these in tandem, um, either behind each other or side by side. I prefer the two units of five as opposed to one unit of ten, just because they can absorb a bit more damage and there's more flexibility in terms of getting those all-important flank charges. I have used them as a unit of ten in the past, um, but run into problems uh, because they become such a high-priority target and they don't really have the nerve to keep them around. Next up is the really fast element of the army. These are my wraiths. So this is just a troop, and they've got the uh, blade of slashing, I think it's the one which gives them one extra attack. Now the nice thing about these guys is that they've got a move of 10, and they're flying. So they can pull out potentially 20 inch charges and go over intervening units. So they are very mobile and a very big threat uh, to a lot of people. The downside is, is they've only got a base of five attacks, um, so the blade gives them an extra one, and they've got a really no nerve of 12. So while they are defense six, they are really easy to be taken out. So I generally don't expect these guys to do too much in the game, 
They do cost 110 points, so they're a little pricey, but it's sort of a point and click. I'll I'll get them to run in, fight one unit, they'll generally take it out, um, especially because they try and hunt archer units or intercept enemy cavalry or go after war machines and things like that with them uh, to get them in the backfield. But if they die before they get to their target, I'm not usually too concerned. A lot of my opponents will prioritize these guys with their war machines especially, um, so they tend to get taken out quite quickly. Um, but normally they'll do enough damage to justify being there. And in larger points values, I'll be expanding out a few more of them uh, just to wreak some havoc. Now my two Balefire Catapults are relatively new additions to the army. Uh, in the past I had been running with a Revenant King instead. Uh, but having seen how effective Catapults can be uh, with some of the other guys I play with, um, I decided I'd swap out the Revenant because he hadn't really been pulling his weight and chuck in a couple of Catapults. Now, I almost feel bad sometimes for taking these, because um, if you're rolling well on your hits and rolling well on your number of wounds, these things can be absolutely decimating. I had one game against a guy at my gaming club where, I think for the first four turns, I didn't miss a single shot, and I was rolling 10s, 11s, and 12s for my wounds, um, which was pretty much spelt instant death for his ogres. They just couldn't stand up to them. So, Balefires can be really, really good, but you need to hit and you need to roll high on your wounds. So I don't like having to rely on them too much. Again, like my Wraiths, um, these are a unit which, if they do lots of damage, I'm really happy, but if they get taken out fast, I'm not too concerned, because uh, my army really sort of lives or dies on the infantry and sort of getting the matchups which I want there. So I use the catapults to soften up enemy targets, take out enemy war machines, um, especially try and take out uh, flanking cavalry and, and units like that which can um, can screw up my infantry line. And last but not least I have my hero models. So starting from the left I use a army standard bearer in every game I play with my undead. Sometimes I have him mounted on a horse but most of the time I keep him on foot and he is an absolutely integral part of the army. I always give him a healing charm uh, just to help help have him do something other than provide inspiring. But the healing's really not a major thing. Inspiring is the is the key. I generally have this guy hanging out just behind my three core infantry units. And he's there just to provide those rerolls when they uh when they do get routed. And he's single handedly won me a lot of games uh without doing any damage himself, but just being there to offer that reroll. Um it's really it's really good when when your opponent's needing a high a high roll on the nerve test and rolls an 11 or 12 and breaks you and you make him re-roll it and he rolls a 2 or a 3, um, even the chances of getting snake eyes on that re-roll are fairly high. Um, so it's it's a good thing to have and inspiring is definitely a, definitely a major bonus. In the middle is my Necromancer. Um, so this is actually a conversion off one of the Kickstarter metal figures. Um, he's from the Forces of Nature army, I think he is. And I didn't didn't really like his head. I wanted someone who sort of looked a little bit more mutated, a little bit more sort of sort of Igor, the uh, assistant like. Uh, so I swapped his head out for a ghoul head. So he's my necromancer. Now in larger games, I'll run two or three of these, uh, but in the smaller points value, I've only got enough space for one. So he's primarily there to offer a little bit of fire support with Zap and healing to keep my infantry units up. Um, he's also got Dark Surge, which can be very useful for setting up flank charges and sort of getting slightly longer charges as well. So the one thing I give this guy is Boots of Levitation. So they just let him be able to move at the double and then cast his spells and things like that. Freeze him up to move around and be a lot more mobile when he's needed. And finally, on the far right hand side is my Revenant King. So I've used this guy in the past instead of running with the Balefire Catapults. He's got a reasonable offensive output. I think off the top of my head he gets 5 attacks. And he's got a fairly high defense value. And again, he uh, can provide inspiring um, to my units. So when I'm not using the Balefires, I tend to use this guy to get two two inspiring sources in there. And generally in those games, uh, my Army Standard Bearer will be on a horse helping out the cavalry units. So I like the Revenant King, but in small points values, he doesn't quite 
doesn't quite do enough to justify being there as compared to the Balefires. So yeah, those are the units in my 1000 point Undead Army. Now, as I mentioned earlier, what I typically do is I have my three infantry units uh, either in the center of the table or in the center off to, the, to one side and sort of refused flank. And then I support the uh, left or right hand side with my cavalry units. And then the other, side, the other flank I typically have my wraiths on. It just sort of depends on where my opponent sort of deploys their war machines and stuff like that. Whenever possible, I'll get my catapults up on a hill just to increase their line of sight. Makes them slightly more vulnerable to counter battery fire, but uh, as line of sight blocking is one of the only things you can use to uh, diminish a catapult's effectiveness. Once you get them up on a hill, they really they really are in the battlefield. So what I always try and do is to sort of dictate where my infantry are going to fight my opponent. Um, I want to sort of set up a nice long line block and try and get all three infantry units into combat at the same time, whether they're getting charged or charging. And what I generally try and do is to sort of pin my opponent's battle line in place and then use my cavalry units or my wraiths to just sort of flick around onto one flank. Because uh, as soon as you've sort of punctured a hole in the flank or in the centre and can start driving your infantry units in, uh, that's when the sort of your opponent's army will collapse quite fast. Um, so I really try and mop things up with my infantry. Um, they're the guys who, who win games for me or lose games for me as well. I'm not so concerned if my cavalry and my war machines don't do lots of damage. Uh, but as I've said, if you're rolling fives to hit with your catapults and then rolling twelves on wounds, uh, those those two little bastards can uh, can win the battle all by themselves. Um, and I always do feel bad when, when I do that to people, but haven't been on the receiving end of it uh, with my Basilians. Uh, I can understand from both directions, but thanks for watching guys. I hope that's given you a bit of an insight as to how I run with my undead and if you're after some more sort of uh, Tutorials tactics tips and stuff like that for Kings of War. Let me know in the comments below. Cheers